Hey everybody, I'm Jamie Davidson, VP of Platform here at Looker, and I'm, I'm so excited to launch some really powerful new features we're going to be bringing to you. But first, I've got a confession. I love Looker. I'm, I'm a data nerd at heart. I was actually an early customer at Hotel Tonight. Uh, and back when I was a customer, it was definitely before we had conferences like this. In fact, it was actually, it was before even the product had visualizations built in. You had to use the API and you know, arbitrary JavaScript to create custom visualizations to be able to, to see charts on top of your data too. But the, the platform and the model added, added real value to it. We were excited to be customers. Looker at its heart's been a platform from the start. We've had a strong philosophy of 110% API, API coverage. So you can do even more than what you can do inside the tool outside. Last year, we announced Blocks. They're, they're powerful models and analytic paradigms for common data sets, making it easy for you to integrate new data into your Looker experience. We're excited to, today to say we've got more than 80 Blocks built by us and our, our great partners, and we're going to continue to build this out. But the model is just the start for Looker. I'm excited to announce a, a broad suite of new data products and building blocks for analytical applications. First, I'm excited to announce data tools. Data tools are custom curated analytical products that you can build for business users to ask frequently asked questions of their data faster than ever before. What does that mean? Let's take a look. Here we've got a cohort visualization tool. It's a very common analytical paradigm, too. I imagine a lot of you, a lot of you guys look at, look at cohorts uh, you know, on, as, as your day-to-day. -day. And it's, it's a sort of a Mad Libs-like analytical question. You can define a cohort by the first uh, sign-up date. You can define a cohort by the first transaction date. You can look at metrics like revenue or transactions or visits. You can do different sorts of aggregations. You can look at cumulative transactions. Or you can look at average revenue per transaction. Data tools make it really easy to give business users the ability to, to ask as many questions as they possibly can of their data in a curated fashion. Somewhere between the fully unconstrained explore and a, a constrained dashboard with only filters. We're really excited about data tools and the, the analysis that it'll power. A close partner of the analysis is visualization. And in a looker, we think about visualization as the ability to derive insight from huge sets of data. Lookers at its core has powerful and beautiful visualizations for the majority of your analytical use cases. But we know that specific use cases with specific data sets require domain expertise and custom visualization. We're excited to announce that all of our customers now will have access to the ability to run arbitrary JavaScript to visualize their data within Looker. What does this look like? I'm a product manager. I love looking at event data. I love looking at and trying to understand basic customer behavior. On our left here, we see a, a sunburst visualization too, a great way to visualize sequence of events too. If I'm an e-commerce, uh, if I'm a product manager for an e-commerce company too, I can use this to understand I uh, drop off points in our app to, to maximize conversion rate. We're excited to, to announce a, a library of custom visualizations that you can take, fork, customize for your own specific experiences too, and the ability for you to build your own as well. So we've talked about, we've talked about analysis. We've talked, thank you. We've talked about visualization and insight. Now to power the instrumented worker that Frank talked about, we want to give you the ability to close the loop and to take action directly from your Looker experience. Last year, we announced Data Action, the ability to send your data to an arbitrary web service that can intermediate between third-party APIs. Now we're going to offer hosted integrations that let you enable these APIs, too, with the press of a button and, and a couple of authentication tokens, too. So what does this mean? You've been able to send data to Amazon S3 and Looker for a long time. Now, with the press of a button, you can send data to Google Cloud Storage, to Azure. For the first time, you can send data to personal storage 
storage receptacles like Dropbox or Google Drive. And what we're most excited about is the ability to actually take action in end tools, too. So the digital marketer now can look at their AdWords data and change a bid inside the AdWords front end through the API. Or the IT operations manager can, can manage their infrastructure killing or auto-scaling or reserving instances directly from within Looker, where they're deriving their intelligence. We talked about analysis. We talked about visualization and insight. And we talked about action. But at the core of what Looker is, is the data. I'm really excited to bring Harthi up to the stage, too, to announce public data sets that are going to now be accessible to your, your uh, analytical uh, tool set that we're going to bring to you uh, in data blocks.